Hello. Well, I'm still working on getting a more robust rudder servo for our Woodstock autonomous sailing boat. Well, after all the good advice I've received of various different ways of working out where this rudder shaft should be, it actually is, I decided in the end to do it the way I first thought of. Problem is, some people advocated indexing off this input shaft, which would, re would have required another 10 to 1 reduction gear between this shaft and the sensor. So that would be quite a lot of complexity and would take up space here, which I probably need for the electronics. Another suggestion was to use the belt that connects this to the rudder by putting uh, magnets on it and using a Hall effect sensor. I could do that, but um, then I got to find Hall effect sensors that are completely sea-proof and uh, fix them in the appropriate place inside the hull of the boat. And I'd rather have it all self-contained and inside the waterproof box. So what I'm going to do, and I can't turn this over now because I've just undone the screws, um, I'm going to make this shaft project out of the bottom and I'm going to have two gears, one on this shaft on the underside and another engaging with it of a similar size, um, transferring the rotation from here to about here where I can put a um, Bourne's uh, absolute angle sensor. And a couple of plastic gears I think will do it. However, that requires a seal like this on the bottom of this shaft. And that causes me a problem because the bottom of this box is not thick enough to accommodate both a bearing and a seal. So, <laughs> my idea now is, see there's no easy answer, <laughs> there's no simple solution to this problem. My idea now is that I will fix a plate underneath this gear to this bottom which will accommodate the bearing that at present is actually cut into the bottom. Then I can use that space to take the seal. That means that this gear will be higher up, which of course it can't be. So I'm hoping that I can actually put this gear the other way up because there's eight millimeters from the bottom the top of this to the bottom of the cover. So if I take this out and see how big that is. So I'm thinking if I just turn this gear upside down, nine and a half millimeters. Uh, so it's one and a half millimeters short. Oh, but uh, <coughs> I can solve that. Because I can just, I can turn one and a half millimetres off here and move this a bit closer to the gear. Yes, I can solve that. So it involves turning that gear and putting a plate down here for that bearing. This is what comes of not thinking things through properly from the beginning. However, sometimes you have to just get on with things, otherwise you never, you never start. And then cope with the problems as they arise. At least that's my experience. I think I've locked tightened this bearing in, so I'm going to have to heat this to get that out. Um, so I'm going to put a plate like that with a hole in it so the bearing can be further up and then we can have the 
shaft seal going through a hole there. So I fixed this plate just to increase the thickness of the whole base plate locally where I want the bearing to go. And I've screwed it down and lock tighted it down last night. So before doing so, I aligned the uh, um, mill head in the centre of the hole that's already there underneath. So I'm hoping if I bore through here, it will exactly line up with the hole that's already there. And uh, if that works, I shall eat my hat. So I milled a 14mm hole prior to boring this. Unfortunately, I forgot to lock the table at all, and therefore it crept sideways um, before I realised. Luckily, I could reset it using the DRO, and I'm hoping that um, it'll be okay. So we'll see. Well, I think that'll go in. So there's still a 6mm locating hole in the bottom so that I can turn this piece over and uh, bore the um, hole for the shaft seal. Right, I've lined that up using a 6mm bar in a 6mm collet. Um, that seems to be okay. So, this new filter, um, this new seal is seven millimeters thick and 19.2 millimeters in diameter so I think this should be 18 uh, millimeters roughly speaking Eighteen point oh two millimeters. It's obviously too small. We need another millimeter. So another millimeter is point oh five on this, which is one rotation. That's not right, actually. Because if we make one mistake, we've got to remake the whole bloody plate, haven't we? So let's not let's not rush. We'll creep up on this. So that'll be a little bit short.
Well, this is supposed to be surely a constant torque handle, so why does it... Nineteen point one eight. You bastard, that's too tight, too loose. Isn't that typical? Still, I suppose we can always screw it in, um, stick it in with Loctite. See, that even that was trying to creep up on it, and we still get it wrong. I'm a genius for getting things slightly wrong. So I measured that as 19.2. And this thing is 19.18, all right. So I just overshot it, despite dialing it back a bit. Well, I'm wanting to drill an oil channel obliquely through here to take oil to the back of the shaft seal. Um, so I've calculated that an angle of 10 degrees is appropriate, so I'm using a 10 degree angle block under there. Um, but whether this 3 millimeter mill will be able to initiate a hole at 10 degrees, I rather doubt. It is an aluminium, fortunately. I wonder whether to try that or whether to actually use a slightly bigger mill to start off with. So I used a 6mm mill just to start the hole and then drilled it with a 3mm mill. But uh, I forgot to film it. So the idea is that when this is on here and this is turning clockwise it will tend to push the oil into that hole which will lubricate the back of this seal even if the whole thing is upside down, which is as it will be. So I put the um, shaft seal and the bearing in and the lock tight it in place and um, I trust you can see that the oil can get through there in between the two, which is good. So I've now got a shaft coming out both sides. That one will drive the rudder, and this one, I thought, would be used to drive one of these Bourne's EMS 22A50 um, absolute angle position sensors. Um, Problem is I can't actually put it there because that would make the whole thing too big to fit in the box or the boat for that matter. So I've got to put it somewhere like that and transfer the rotation from here to there. So my idea was I would take these Delrin gears, put them like that a suitable bush to enlarge that. Um, I'm thinking that will work because I can just fit this gear. I've got five millimeters here before I reach the top of this um, plastic box. Anyone can't get plastic boxes exactly the size you want, but you can't, so I've got to fit that. So I think I can just fit that on there. It's quite difficult to measure the internal height of this box because of the complicated lip. Um, so I thought I'd check that. If, if we put that in there like that, and I... some blue tack on it like that and then I 
put some oil here to stop the blue tack from sticking to this bit. Then I'm thinking if I squash this down properly, right, so we now have a plane surface which is exactly the height and we can measure that. Nine point six three. Let me write that down before I forget it. Well, that's good because it's um in fact, I'm going to have to mill a little bit off off this uh, gear so that it clears that. That's rather what I thought. Well, I put a piece of aluminium in there, in a rather half-assed manner, as a kind of stop, to stop the gear sliding to the right. So that has reduced it from 9.9 .9 to about 9.3 and I think that there is still room to fix it. For the microcontroller inside the rudder servo I've decided to use a Teensy 3.2 which is uh, uh, one of these Arduino compatible um, little boards um, and I've done some work enabling it to read the Bourne's uh, angle sensor and to switch the power on and off to, to it so that um, we don't have to incur 20 milliamp current load all the time. That's the current that this angle sensor takes. Um, so that is ready. Well, that was where I'd got to up to yesterday. And at that point, Dick... Um, threw a spanner in the works by sending me this email. Um, Dick is a glider pilot and he watches uh, all kinds of things concerned with uh, aircraft and uh, he was watching a video by a guy called Tim Station uh, who was uh, designing um, controls for a flight simulator and uh, Tim Station, and I'll link his video in the description, uh, came up with an interesting idea which is simpler than using the Bourne's angle controller. Instead of buying a different magnet or using a potentiometer, I realised I can use a north and south pole of two separate magnets, and as long as they're not too far apart, the Hall effect sensor will still output a linear value. Tim Stanton's idea uses the Honeywell SS490 series of linear Hall effect sensors and uh, these sensors in effect they output a voltage between naught and whatever the supply voltage is uh, in proportion to the uh, magnetic flux that they experience. So um, the one he was actually using was this one I think. It can take between plus and minus 600 gauss and it outputs a voltage between uh, naught and say 5 volts if you power it with 5 volts in a linear way as shown uh, here. So that seems all it requires is a, a, a A to D converter in the microprocessor to read it and these sensors cost uh, only a couple of pounds or, or less uh, and I could mount such an arrangement uh, in the place where I was going to put that white uh, Delrin gear and it would be easier to do, take up less space and uh, 
produce hopefully a good result. So that's what I'm going to try next.